in you. The character of Christ in you. And of course, you know, this symbol that's on the wall is not only the church angels. Those are the seven virtues and those are the seven expressions of the character of Christ. Amen. Let us read Ephesians 1, 4, just for a starting point. I could have used several scriptures. I could have used the scripture, Christ in you, the hope of glory, you know, power of God, work it in you. Many scriptures could be used, but I'll use Ephesians 1, 4. Praise the Lord. Amen. God answers prayers. Amen. I, I understand that a lot of you have been getting answers, answered prayers. Amen. I understand that the prayer group is working. My God is working mightily through the prayer group. Amen. 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 Prayers come in and then prayers are answered. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Praise God. Remember the meeting coming on the end of the week and ask God to anoint the minister and bless the meeting, amen, and invite your friends, invite folks in the best you can, and let's get together and give God glory and praise. Amen. Amen. Let us pray before we read one verse out of Ephesians 4. Our dear God and gracious Heavenly Father, we are together again. Just like we were up in heaven, you send our souls down upon the earth to represent you, and being trapped in this body, we were subject to sin and pain and suffering and sickness. But by the opening of the word, the soon the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. Amen. And Father, as we are about to read your will from your holy word, may the Spirit of Almighty God come on the scene and anoint the word of God for our hearts, Father. Lift us up in the spirit. Break the chains of doubt and fear. I rebuke every spirit of hindrance and obstacle and, and, and loose the minds of the people to believe the word of God for this out. We ask your blessing now and the, and the multiplication and portioning of the word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. I'll go to the next verse. Uh, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. There's a little, little uh, chorus that I love to sing. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All God's wonderful passions and Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All God's wonderful passions and purity. Oh, the Spirit divine, all my nature refined. Praise God. And uh, 
the thing about that also, he says that in the choosing of a bride, uh, that we must that there'll be a rise of the in the beauty of women in the last days. He says that clearly. He says back in the days, or oh, uh, the women that were beauty queens back there, he said they won't even they won't even they won't even be chosen to be in the lineup. And four, because just the normal woman of today is a beauty. Amen. Some of the sisters didn't know that, but I'm telling them that now. Praise the Lord. Brother Brandon said that. That's a prophet saying that. He says the normal woman today would have been a beauty queen back there. And what they call beauty is totally different today. But let me uh, prophesy that there will be a rise of beauty of women in the last days. Amen. In other words, he says that get, the women will get more beautiful and more beautiful and more beautiful, and the men will get weaker but wiser. Right? Amen. They may look bigger, but in actual fact, they'll get weaker but wiser. <laughs> but the women will rise in beauty in every possible way. Amen. And then he goes on to talk about, uh, let, me, let me actually find it right here. Now, he says, now, you know a woman is a type of the church. We are the bride, and the, ch the church is the bride. That's a woman types the bride. A lot of brides, they are out there. And let, don't let them women entice you. See, you see, their ministers are letting them churches. Pull them off from the truth. See, I'll be switching between the natural woman and the spiritual woman uh, like there. Well, she cuts her hair, and when she does that, that woman has cut off her power and her glory. Right. Not again, sisters. If God could give a man a better thing than a good wife, he'd have given him that. But not all women are good, and not all women are wives. You see? Or not all females are even mothers. Not all that have children are real motherly. I've seen some, I'd have better respects for a dog than to take their kids and set them out in the street and lay out there not even caring. People coming out in these little old clothes and things until in this hour are women are immorally dressed. Can you say amen? amen? Wow. Now, in the choosing of a bride or a wife, I'm just laying some background here. Amen. He says, you may look at, there might be one girl that's real pretty and another one with a great stature that looks better than this other one. Wow. But, Brothers, you may have to sacrifice one for the other. <clears throat> if she is not the stature of a woman or of a lady, I don't care whether she's pretty or she's not pretty. You brothers had better look at her character. Amen. 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 Whether she's pretty or not pretty, look at her character. Now for it is becoming, if a Christian would choose a wife, he ought to choose a genuine, born-again woman. Regardless of what she looks like. It's what she is what makes her. And then again, that reflects his own bodily character and what's in his mind for a wife. What's going to be in the future for his family. But if he marries one of these modern-day flappers, reketters, sex queens, what would he expect? What kind of a home if he marries a girl that ain't got morals enough to stay home and take care of the house? Amen? What kind of a housekeeper will she be? You see, that's it. But that's the beauty of the women that is to happen in the last days. Amen? That is what's supposed to be happening in, this, in these last days that we are living in. Praise the Lord. I want to give you one more quote here because uh, he's striking on the fact that uh, gifts without character is satanic. Amen. 
Now, how am I applying it? Certain women are given certain gifts. They may be given a, a lot of um, uh, gifts in their bodily shape and form, while others may not be gifted in that way. But gifts without character is satanic. Mm -hmm. You see how I'm applying it? Amen. I'm applying it in that way, and then I'm talking also about supernatural spiritual gifts in the life of an individual. If, if that individual does not allow the Holy Spirit first to form and control the character, the manifestation of those gifts, the genuine though they may be, would be devilish. Amen. The application of it would be devilish. Brother Brennan said about himself, he said, having a gift of discernment, if you allow yourself not to pray enough and you start to get carnal, instead of, of the gift operating as a gift of discernment, it will become one of the worst critics. Because then the person is starting to see things carnally. In other words, you, you're, doing it, you're doing it from a carnal point of view, right? That's the same thing. Just as much as he says, really, he says, them witches out there, if they had surrendered themselves to God, they would have been servants of God with gifts of prophecy and discernment. Amen. But they allow themselves to be controlled by the devil, and therefore the devil manifests himself through them. Yeah. You see where I'm talking yeah. about? Now you see why we are on the razor's edge? And you can fall either way, even though you're a Christian? You follow me now? Yes. You can go either way, though you're a big Christian. A lot of people take this message, and Solomon said, It's wise to be not over much righteous. Yes. That sounds so funny. How can you be too righteous? But you can. Right? The old Pentecostal used to say, You, you get so righteous, you don't hardly put. Uh, your mind is so much in the heavens that you're not dealing with reality. You see? We've got to be both uh, deeply spiritual, but intensely practical. Amen. Amen. Recognize your day and the hour of the day that you're living in. Or else you're going to go right off. And as a result of that, a lot of ministers have made a mess of a lot of people's lives. Amen. I'm not thinking of any particular person or persons. I'm not talking in general. Uh, mess the people's lives up because they... They just uh, so push them this way, push them that way, and get them in all kinds of fanaticism and everything, you know, like that, instead of keeping them solidly balanced on the Word of God. Amen. Now, listen to the prophet before I started going into the message itself. He says, Now, unless we suffer, we cannot reign with him. How many will say that? Amen. Amen. You have to suffer, he said, before you can reign. The reason for this is that character is simply, is never made without suffering. Amen. Amen. Let's use Job. I don't mean that you're going to have the suffering to the extremity of Job. He, God was using Job as a, as a type or as a symbol so we can have an example as a Christian that every son or daughter of God must be tested. Amen. You must be tested. And so he says, your character uh, can be formed without suffering. For character is a victory, Amen. not a gift. That's right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. A man without character can pray because power apart from character is Satan. But power with character is victory. Amen. And since he wants to share his throne on the same basis that he owned them, and is set down in his father's throne, then, then we have to overcome before we can sit down with him. Amen. Amen. Then we have to overcome. And the little temporary sufferings we go through is not worthy to be compared with the tremendous glory that will be revealed in us when he comes. Oh, what treasures are laid up for those who are willing to enter this kingdom through much tribulation. Amen. God wants men. How many believe that? Amen. 
wedding supper of the Lamb, he's speaking. Man is not measured by how big his arms are, but God measures a man by his character. Amen. Certainly, he can be a big man and be nothing but a brute. I seen men weigh 200 pounds and didn't have one ounce of a manhood in them. Nobody say amen. amen. <laughs> Not one ounce. See? But a man is measured by character. And so are women measured by their character. And if we are truly sons and daughters of God, what type of character then? should we have. Amen. Amen. You should have the character of Christ. Amen. Amen. That is what we should have. We are not here to talk Christianity, but to live Christianity. Amen. And be genuine Christians for the glory of God. Now, having the gifts of God, wonderful, marvelous gifts, without having the character to control those gifts, Amen, makes them And that is why in the next thing, 
statements he's saying here. Now, you now you see, you really can't impersonate them. You can't imitate them. Amen. Praise God. How could he say that? And yet, say the Christadelphians have love more than some of you. There are people out there not born again expressing virtues that looks more beautiful and like they're more Christian than the real Christian. Is that right? Wow. And yet he says, but these can't be impersonated. What he's saying is that the real Christ, you can't impersonate that. You can't impersonate his personality. They can go out and like the devil and try to, to do the same thing by human effort, but it's still not the same. It's still not the same. You can't do it. It's not really there. And you can't do it of yourself. Amen. It's like when Israel, God gave them the law and said, Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not do that. But in actual fact, God placed those laws deliberately so that they will come back to him and say, Lord, we, we, we can't keep this while we're in this flesh as humans. We, we, we can't keep it. There's no way for us to keep the law. Then he will give them the power to keep the law because it will take the blood to do that. Amen. It, took the, it will take the blood to do that. But they did not do that. It's the same way. All these virtues, oh, I'm supposed to do this, I'm supposed to do this. Then you find yourself not doing it, like what Paul said, the things I should do, I don't do, and what I shouldn't do, I find myself doing. Because of the human nature that we are living in. And the only thing that can help you is Christ himself in you, your hope of glory. Amen. It's him. 
then Paul says, oh, what's there to boast about then? There's nothing you can boast on. You, you can't boast on your holiness because it's not yours. You can't boast on your humility, it's not yours. You can't boast on the gifts, it's not yours. You can't boast on love, it's not yours. None of it is yours, it's Him. Amen. It's all about Him. Amen. Christ in you, your hope of glory. Amen. The character of Christ yes. controlling the carnal nature.
Moses, you really believe that Bible, what it says there? You really believe it so much? Suppose your God tell you to jump, to the, jump through that wall. You still going to jump? He said, I'm still going to jump. Because yeah. he told me to jump. It's his business to know how we're going to make our way through the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Understand and trust him Amen. and believe his word. Amen. You, Praise the name of the Lord. See, Amen. don't worry. Every when you are a real Christian, the Holy Spirit comes down and seals you into the kingdom. And if, don't you have to worry about nothing? Everybody will know when you really got it. Amen. Oh, she got the Holy Ghost. I heard her go have the love of shot that way. She got it. Amen. I do that pray with me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And if the Spirit of God wants to give a prophecy or interpretation, then it will go public. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Other than that, you don't need to for people to know, oh, he got it. They, you know, this one got it, or that one got it even more than the other one. Oh, my God. Praise the Lord. No. See, everybody will know, not from the tongues. Is that right? Amen. But from the life of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Right? Amen. Because do I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity? It profits nothing. Yeah. Matter of fact, you become a sounding drum and an empty, empty drum and give, uh, as a sounding symbol. Amen. Keeping a whole lot of noise and behind it is nothing. Is that praise God? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Hallelujah. What did the old engine chief say? He said, much thunder, lots of lightning, no rain. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But we want to hold to God's unchanging hand. Yeah. Now we know you don't have to say a word about it. You don't say, you don't have to say, I got it. You don't have to say I spoke with tongues. Lord and God, I know I got it. Amen. Oh, I got Worried about people and what people think. Mm -hmm. Too many people allow themselves to be 
imprisoned by the opinions of others rather than the presence of Christ in their lives. Yeah. 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 buy a head in a restaurant to pray. Uh, people are going to look at me. All those petty, carnal, childish stuff like that. At the same time, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm not talking you go the opposite way, and you're praying loud because you want people to see that you're a Christian. You see, you, you see you're always going to have a balance. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You do these things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, sometimes uh, uh, I will just uh, take the fork and I start to eat it. Oh, you didn't pray. But how do you know I didn't pray? I didn't feel like praying verbally this time, but I did pray within my heart. Amen. Amen. So don't judge people by what you see they do and they don't do and this. Get out of those kinds of stuff and just be free. Be a Christian and all about that. You don't have to be watching people and picking here and picking there. Yes. This, this is not, uh, uh, what do you call it, old MacDonald have a farm, a little peck here and a peck there, peck, 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 peck. We're not picking at nobody. Amen. Amen. We are here live a solid Christian life. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. What kind of a pastor or farm is going to plant a seed in somebody's heart or in the ground and every next morning you go in and dig it up and you see if it's growing. <laughs> the next day you come back and dig it up and you go, the preacher doesn't have to do that. Matter of fact, you know with your own children, you send them to school every day. You can't watch them 24-7. You got to put the rest of the time when you're not with them or seeing them in the hands of God. Amen. Amen. Because the, he says, even if you stay awake, he said, the watchman watcheth but in vain. Mm -hmm. But he that keepeth his realm, I slumber, neither slumbers nor sleep. Amen. So place it in the Lord's hand. Yes. And let him take control. Amen. Do what you can and then take a stand. Amen. I said, do what you can and Amen. then take a stand. Amen.
Because God is not going to bypass his representative mm -hmm. and go to you right. and show you something else. Certainly, he will reveal something you that can be helpful in the church. Because I know that the people being used in the church say this, that, that, the other. Praise the Lord. That it, but then it must always be filtered through the pastoral ministry or the minister that's there at the time. That main gift has to filter those things. That's why he used to tell them, write your dreams, write your prophecies. Don't just take it and take you and just interpret it by yourself. And, and uh, you may not be seeing everything as clearly as God will allow that man to see it. I had a case where somebody had a dream and they came in and, uh, and, and they were telling, telling it in the church. I said, stop, don't do that. Uh, they said, well, you know, Lord, are you? I said, don't do it, you know, because when interpretation comes, you don't know what it's going to be. Well, they didn't listen. They continued talking about it. And uh, I'm preaching away one Sunday, one Sunday. Then I noticed the whole family got mad and this and that. They start jingling their car keys and stopping. And next thing you know, they stopped and they walked out. And what happened? Their own dream exposed them and it was revealed. You hear me? And I didn't make up the dream, so it's you the one that dreamt it, so you can't say that I made anything up. The Holy Spirit. So that's the way it is. So you be careful. It may not be the way you seem or you think. That's why he says many times, you write it down, you, 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 or you go to the pastor, you let it be known that way, rather than you go first among the congregation and spreading all kinds of stuff that you don't understand fully what it means. And then come to the pastor afterwards. No, you don't do it. You got it backwards. You come to the pastor first, and then you make those things known. And allow the Holy Spirit. If he said, well, I don't understand it right now, I'm going to pray about it. All the prophets did that. They said, I don't know. The Lord hide it from me. I don't know. I have to go pray. And then you pray. And then God will give some interpretation or understanding. And then the church moves on in an orderly fashion by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I follow it. Does this make sense to you? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are uh, we thank God that we we are being we are here to be tutored by the right tutor. Amen. And the tutor is the Holy Spirit, according to John uh, 14. Amen. Hallelujah. See? Now, when a member is born by the Holy Ghost and is proven to have these virtues in them, and God can see them, amen, that's when you see a real son and daughter of God. Hallelujah. That true church is going to be there. The church is predestinated to be there. By a production, God is telling you, you are predestinated unto adoption. You are predestinated to come to that perfection and have all those things operating in your life. Never mind what you think about yourself, it's what he thinks about you. That's why Paul said, even if your heart condemns you, God, what he says, is greater than your heart. Is that right? Praise the name of the Lord. God is working on something, right? Amen. I said, God is working. I believe he's in the house. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. He's in my house. Amen. Amen. He's in the house. Amen. He wants to suck with you. He's in the house. Amen. And when he is in the house, the sick get healed. Amen. When he's in the house, the crowds are gathering around and saying, what's going on? Amen. Because he's in the house. Amen. Even if you're not going to make a hole in the roof to get to church, you're going to make a hole in the roof because he's in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Do you know that after a while the Holy Spirit has to make a report to the, upon your character? He has to report about you how you were fussing, fighting, how you were having differences, how you were going in there and separating brotherhood. Oh, how that must grieve God in the body of Christ. These things happen in the body of Christ. Think about it. It is our own character that is tearing us down. Our own character is tearing us down. 
Amen. Now we are children. Don't forget that. But when you are truly born again and you are a child of God, you may be a child of God, but a disobedient child of God. Is that right? Now, what is he talking about? He's not talking here about backsliding. Is that right? Because a, a real believer, really, you can't really backslide as such. You can't backslide. You can't be lost anymore. Because God can't make you his child today and make you a devil tomorrow. That's right. Amen. God is eternal and when he makes a decision, it's always the right decision. Amen. Amen. And it doesn't change. No matter how the circumstances look, it doesn't change. Amen. So you are the child of God. So you can be a child, but you're a disobedient child. You can have your own child. Let's use your own child, whoever they are. It's your child. But today, it's an obedient child. You couldn't want better. Tomorrow, I made this child. 